Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 10 students who are working on the year-end summative. It's question four, which is from the linear systems section. The question says, two people are 510 kilometers apart and start moving directly towards each other at the same time. If one travels 40 kilometers per hour and the other travels 45 kilometers per hour, how much time will pass before they meet? So little diagram here, there's two people, I'll call them A and B, they're 510 kilometers apart. And then they start moving toward each other, one of them at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour, and the other at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour. And at some point, they will meet. So what that means, when you think about where they meet, it means that there's some point where they are at the same place at the same time. That's how you meet someone. So this person's gonna travel covering a distance and a time, and this person's obviously gonna cover a different distance, but the same amount of time they're gonna end up here together. So how are we gonna express this mathematically so we can actually solve the question of how much time will pass? Well, the first thing is because we are talking about distance, time, speed, I wanna make sure that I um, really understand how to work with those particular variables. So speed we know is distance over time. And if you ever forget that, you should know that because when we talk about speed, we talk about kilometers per hour. So directly in a speed expression, it reminds you that distance over time. Now, if I mathematically rearrange this, so for example, if I multiply both sides by time, I've isolated distance. And that gives me another version of the same formula. Distance can be found by doing speed times time. And I mean, that makes sense as well in the real world. If I'm traveling 100 kilometers per hour, and I'm going for four hours, I've traveled 400 kilometers. So I've rearranged the formula and it also just makes sense logically. And then if I rearrange again, so here I have an equation for speed, here I have an equation for distance. So if I rearrange again, I'm gonna to to now isolate time. So to isolate time, I'm gonna divide both sides by speed and that gives me this equation. Time is distance divided by speed. So, and again, that makes sense. If I've traveled 400 kilometers and I was traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, that would have taken me four hours. So those are the three equations. Well, it's really one equation rearranged, um, but I like to do that rearrangement before I get too deep into the actual math of a question. So we might use one or more of these in our problem solving. So again, here's the situation. We have two people who are 510 kilometers apart and they start moving directly towards each other at the same time. So again, at some point they're gonna meet up and the point where they meet up um, is gonna be, we know that their times will be the same. So in order for them to be in the same place at the same time, they must have traveled for the same amount of time. So at this point here where they meet, their times are equal. But what about their distances? Well, it's unlikely, in fact, impossible for their distances to be the same since they're traveling at different speeds. The person traveling at 45 kilometers per hour will have covered more distance because they're going a little faster. But how far, what is the distance that they'll cover? Well, I don't know. So um, what we're gonna do to express this mathematically, I'm gonna say that the first person travels X kilometers and the second person how far do they travel? Well, I don't wanna introduce another variable if I don't have to, and the fact is, I don't have to. We know that the total distance is 510 kilometers. So if the first person covers X kilometers, this distance, then the other person has to cover the rest. Well, the rest would be 510 minus X kilometers. So that's what's left over for the other person to cover. So again, when they meet, the times that they've traveled will be equal and the distances will be X kilometers and 510 minus X. So that sort of tells me how I might set up this equation. So first of all, um, let's define X since I already used it. So I'm gonna let X be the distance traveled by the 40 kilometer per hour person. and I'm measuring that in kilometers, so I need to indicate that. And again, that's just fitting with what we just talked about here. And therefore, the other person 
travels 510 minus x kilometers. So the first line is defining that variable, and then I'm just immediately going to say, therefore, I know what the other person is doing. Um, now, the other thing I need to talk about is time. So we know how long they both travel. Well, we don't actually know it, but we're going to define it. We're going to say let t be the time each person travels before meeting. Uh, time is measured in hours, and of course what we know, so again I'll just use this brain bubble over here, is that the times for each is the same. So they both travel the same amount of time. Different speeds, different distances, but the time has to be the same because we need them to be in the same place at the same time. So those are my variables. X is going to be distance and T is going to be time, and time is going to be the same for each. So if I write an equation for both of them, so the first person and the second person, we know that time is the same. So I'm going to write an equation for time. And again, this is what we looked at in another slide that we know that time is equal to distance divided by speed. So for the first person, so person number one, here's a formula for them. Time is distance over speed. So time we define to be T, that person's distance was X, and that person's the 40 kilometer per hour person. So that's an equation representing the time it takes for the first person to reach the meeting point. For the second person, we also have t, same time, but their distance is 510 minus x, and their speed is 45. So I've now created two equations out of the variables I defined. And again, what's really important, this brain bubble, is that these times are the same. And because they're the same, I can substitute them for each other. So if time equals x over 40, and the same time is 510 minus x, then these two must also be equal. And that's why I'm creating my equation that will help me solve for my variables. So the time it takes the first person must be the same as the time it takes the second person. And now I have a single equation with one unknown, and that unknown is x. So now I just have to do some algebra here to solve for x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 45, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 40 to give me this equation. So 45, when I multiplied this side by 45, it just cancelled. When I multiplied by 40 over here, it just cancelled. So that's why you see 45 shows up here. I'm basically cross-multiplying. So 40 times 510 is 20,400 minus 40x. So collecting like terms, I've got 45x and minus 40x, so add 40x to the other side. And then all I have to do to find x is divide by 85. I get 240. So I know now that the distance that the first person travels, so if you think about again our, our little diagram, they meet here. Well now I know that it's 240 kilometers from where the slower person is. And I could figure out this distance as well, because it's 510 minus 240. Um, but I'm not actually interested in the, in the distance. The question was asking how much time will pass. So um, now I'm going to use this x value and sub it into one of my equations that has t in it. So for the first person, we said that x was 240 over 40. That means that the time is 6 hours. And I'm just going to check that in the other equation which was this equation. So 510 minus 240 divided by 45, because if I get six hours, I'm really darn confident in my answer, and I do. So therefore, uh, in six hours, they meet. Same place, same time. So I hope that was helpful. Um, continue doing math and, and getting help when you need it, and good luck on your summatives.